from mountain ranges to untouched caves all the way to a brand new island that just appeared. These are some of the most incredible places on earth that just don't seem real. Let's dive right into the top 10 shocking real places that actually exist. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have Tsingy National Park. Tsingy National Park is located on the western edge of Madagascar but today I really want to talk about two large geographical features in the park which are Big Tsingy and Little Tsingy. Tsingy can be translated into English as roughly where one cannot walk barefoot and when you see it you'll realize that this name makes a lot of sense. These rock formations are plateaus that have deep ruts cut into them by the groundwater which has left them totally unable to be walked on or through. This whole area is incredibly fascinating and it is the home to many endemic species because of its very unusual geomorphology. Some of these species are found only within extremely small areas within the Tsingis because the summit, slope and base of one limestone needle will all form completely different ecosystems which is unbelievable. The Tsingis are a perfect example of what happens when humans just leave a place alone and let nature and the earth just exist. It would be an amazing place to go and explore but because of the nature of the limestone needles we just can't and that truly is probably for the best. In our number 9 spot today we have Cape Melville. Cape Melville is located in Australia and it is the home to one of the lost worlds of the earth. It truthfully wasn't discovered until recently and that is due to the surrounding wall of granite boulders that are hundreds of feet tall. But inside this stone wall is an amazing, mysterious and uncharted rainforest which is the coolest thing. Because of the more recent discovery and the lack of exploration this area has been preserved in its natural state which is something that is not easily found on our super populated planet. This place is only accessible by helicopter and has only seen one major scientific exploration but on this one adventure at least three new species were found. I'm sure there will be further research of the area to learn about all of the endemic species that live there and to study how they evolved to fit in this interesting ecosystem. In our number 8 spot today we have the Star Mountains of Papua New Guinea. This massive mountain range is located in Papua New Guinea and although we of course know about it, much of the area remains completely untouched by humans. This area is thought to be one of the wettest places on earth as it sees more than 10,000 millimeters of rain every year. At that point, you wonder why they're still measuring in millimeters, but hey, I'm not a weatherman. Due to the rain and just how torrential the downpour is, there isn't a spot in the entire range that can house a weather station. There was an attempt made to explore the range in 1959 by a man named Jan Sneep who wanted to try and map out the area and it was slightly successful but not without struggle. During the expedition they had two helicopters but due to the altitudes one of them ended up crashing and they were forced to rely on their own manpower from then on. While this of course would suggest that humans have of course at some point visited the mountain range, as I previously mentioned there are most definitely areas that remain unvisited by humans and it's probably for the best if we leave it that way. In our number 7 spot today we have the San Dun Cave. Cave. This cave is located in Vietnam and it is the largest cave in the world. The name means the Mountain River Cave and it was created somewhere between 2 to 5 million years ago from river water eroding away the limestone. In some areas of the cave the ceiling collapsed which has created natural skylights. These areas have allowed many plants and trees to grow and it has definitely increased the vegetation. The cave is around 9 kilometers long and it is home to the tallest known stalagmites in the world with these mineral deposits getting up to around 70 meters tall. There was a plan to install a cable car through the cave to create a tourist attraction but thankfully those plans were cancelled due to the potential harm that it would cause the environment which I think most of us can agree was for the best. In our number 6 spot today we have Mount Bosavi. This mountain is located in the southern highlands province of Papua New Guinea but it is actually the collapsed cone of an extinct volcano. The volcano volcano actually collapsed to create a crater that is around 4 kilometers wide and 1 kilometer deep. There isn't a lot that is known about this area but in 2009 an international team of scientists went down there on an expedition that was entirely filmed by the BBC Natural History Unit. It is believed that the crater was created around 200,000 years ago and during the crew's time researching the area there were around 40 new species that were uncovered as the crater has its very own fascinating isolation 
insulated ecosystem. Who knows what more may be down there just waiting for us to uncover. In our number 5 spot today we have the Moval Cave. This cave is located in Romania just a few kilometers from the coast of the Black Sea and it was first discovered in 1986. This cave has been isolated from the outside world for millions of years and basically everything that goes on inside of it is different than what we are used to. The cave life is not based on photosynthesis and rather chemosynthesis. The level of oxygen in the cave is around a third of what is normally found in the atmosphere and of the 48 species found in the cave, 33 of them were endemic, meaning they can't be found anywhere else on earth. It is just crazy that this is possible. For five and a half million years, creatures on this planet could be living an entirely different life than the rest of us inside a previously undiscovered place. It's absolutely fascinating. In our number four spot today, we have Point Nemo. You know when you take a road trip and you have to stop somewhere to pee and it's always like a random town and you're like, wow, we're really out here in the middle of nowhere right now. Well, those random towns have nothing on Point Nemo. This is the most remote location on Earth. It's officially known as the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility because it is the furthest point away from land. This area is surrounded by more than a thousand miles of ocean in each direction. There's obviously no humans who live even close to Point Nemo, which is why it is called that in the first place, Nemo being Latin for no one. While this may not be a scientifically impossible place, it's just just one fact that is honestly shocking to me and it is what got this place a spot on this list. This location is so isolated that the closest people to Nemo aren't even on this earth. Since the inhabited area closest to the point is over 1000 miles away, the humans aboard the International Space Station are way closer than anyone on land. That truly is just wild. Kind of sounds like a dream also kind of sounds like a nightmare. In our number 3 spot today we have Kawa Ijen. Located in Indonesia, this is one of the most remarkable and interesting places on earth. Firstly, this active volcano emits hot, flammable, sulfurous gases. These gases ignite as they enter the oxygen-rich atmosphere of earth and this causes them to burn with a stunning blue flame. Further scientific processes also allows there to be a flow of molten sulfur that is also that same striking blue color. At night is when you really get quite a show from this coloring as it quite literally looks like a flow of blue lava. The other incredible thing about this location is that there is a one kilometer wide caldera that is filled with turquoise blue water. The water color, while it looks gorgeous, is a result of the extreme acidity as well as the high concentration of dissolved metals. It is an astonishing place to look at and it really is magnificent. Just don't touch it. In our number 2 spot today we have Lake Neos. Lake Neos is located in Cameroon and it is different from many regular old lake because of the volcanic crater that it sits in. The magma floor releases carbon dioxide into both the water and the surrounding air making it a less than ideal place to live and breathe. Usually the CO2 just dissipates into the air mostly harmlessly, but in 1986 there was a limnic eruption that caused catastrophe. A limnic eruption is very rare, but it's what happens when dissolved carbon dioxide suddenly erupts from lake waters which then goes on to form a gas cloud. This resulting gas cloud is extremely dangerous and is capable of displacing the oxygen in the area, which of course is lethal to any living thing there, which is exactly what happened in 1986. This limnic eruption caused a noxious cloud of more than 1 million tons of CO2. This ended up taking the lives of the 1,700 people in the area as well as the 3,500 livestock which made it the first known large scale asphyxiation caused by a natural event. Despite the threat of another eruption as well as the lake's weakening walls that could result in a massive flood, people have resettled this area around the lake. I'm not gonna lie. I wouldn't risk it, which makes me wonder why these people chose here, and I'm sure that there's gotta be a reason. In our number one spot today, we have Surtsey Island. This island was born in 1963. By that, I mean it emerged from the sea in that year just off of the coast of Iceland after four years of being formed by an undersea volcano. 
a brand new island. What could we possibly do with that? Well, I'm sure humans could find a million and one ways to ruin it. Surprisingly, we decided not to do that at all. Instead, this island was protected in order to allow scientists to study how new ecosystems form and what happens when there's no human involvement. This means that those who are permitted to go to the island have some very strict rules to adhere to and it's not like just anyone is allowed to go. One of these rules is no seeds and no using the facilities on the island. That last rule is because one day when scientists found a tomato growing on the island, they were quite confused as to how. Turns out somebody had gone number two not too long before and thus a new poop tomato was grown from the ground. All right guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Bye.